Hey folks, this is Lucid and welcome to the National Overview for Early Age Micklin. We had played Micklin before on this series, or on this channel, but we played Late Age Micklin. And Late Age Micklin is generally a bit harder to play than Early Age Micklin, I would say. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So we'll, we'll have a lot of fun here. We'll talk about Micklin, and I don't know how much we're going to go through, like, pretender design, but there's a few kind of main strategic things I want to leave you with. I want to talk about how to design your bless. I want to talk about how to build your forts. I want to talk about how to control your dominion. And I want to talk about how to use your mages. And then we're going to go through some of the summons, too. So what is Micklin? Micklin is probably the premier hell bless nation in the game. They usually are going to burn all their scales to the ground. And the reason for that is a fewfold. They have two sacreds they get. One, and so in every era, it's different. Well, not, not technically, but like in early age, you can get eagle warriors, which are these guys, a sacred unit with two weapons that can fly when they're blessed out of your cap. And in every fort, you can get jaguar warriors. In Middle Age, it's the reverse, where Jaguar Warriors are scarce and you can only get them out of your cap, but other, you know, the Eagle Warriors you can get everywhere. And then in Late Age, they reverse it back. But I believe in Late Age, and maybe also in Middle Age too, you get like the Rain Warrior, which can go underwater. You definitely get them in the Late Age. I can't remember if you get them in the Middle Age. But that's basically it. You have other units which are sacred too. Like you get a Sun Warrior here, which is like a more heavily armored dude. And they have a shield, which is kind of nice if you're worried about like archers and stuff like that. So this is another option for cap recruitment. So you have sacreds you can get everywhere. And in, in, in addition, you have a really good blood hunter, the Micklin Priest. And so you're going to have a really good blood economy and with those blood slaves, you can do a bunch of things. The things players normally do with them is turn them into ozolotls, which are these three attack. We'll, we'll pull them up. All right, so this is the ozolotl, or the Ozzy, or the murder kitty, as they are called. And they're really good. They're size three with 33 hit points. And they have three attacks. They're flying demons. They're really solid. And these, once you get a critical mass of them, are very, very hard for players to deal with. Very, very hard. One of the main ways you fight against these guys is, like, kind of like if you don't have it, you can't really take an army battle. Is usually a Storm Staff. Storm Staff is going to stop the flying, so you don't get, like, murdered before you can get your buffs up. Because to fight Ozzy's, usually you're going to want a lot of buffs. And there are ways to, like, beat Ozzy stacks in the late game, but again, there's, like, prerequisites. And, of course, they're sacred, so they take whatever bless you have. So they're really strong. So a lot of the plan for Micklin is to try to take advantage of the Recruit Anywhere sacreds you get, make a ton of these. The other thing you do is you get the Tribal King, and this guy is a slaver, so he can go out and collect slaves in exchange for a bit of unrest and use the slaves that you get to patrol down the unrest you get from blood hunting. And so that little cycle is basically kind of the core of a lot of Micklin play. You make your recruit anywhere sacreds, you make slaves, you blood hunt, you make ozolotls, and you kill people with it. That's kind of like entrance to Micklin. But as we're going to talk about with all the mages, and also with like the fort placement and dominion control, there's a lot of ways to optimize that and to do it even better. So we'll talk through the mages here real quick. This guy's your basic blood hunter. He's also going to be jumping into Sabbaths. There's also the Nahuli. This is one of my favorite mages. It's a little vulnerable to magic duel, but at 125, you're not really going to sweat it. It comes in a few randoms. You can occasionally get an astral two, a death random. I believe this is the only access to death you get on this nation. A nature random for a very high nature three and a blood random, which gives you blood nature cross paths and blood astral cross paths. But these guys are amazing. They can turn into a turkey, which can fly. So they're actually highly mobile. And having the second form is also nice for dealing with like remotes and stuff. I believe if you're in the turkey and you take damage, it'll just switch you back into the human uh, if you, you know, die as a turkey. So, um, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Um, it's, this can do so many amazing things in the, the late mid game. Like you just fly somewhere and you do mass protection because all these mages without any further support can do mass protection. 
I believe you can even do mass regen if you do power of the spheres first. So like, let's make sure I'm not lying here. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, you can. So, uh, nature three mage. So you can have two guys fly in and do mass protection, mass regen, where you know on a PD dump or something, right? Like these guys are very, very versatile. They can also enter into communions. I mean, you can also have nature three, right, from power of the spheres. Also makes these guys able to cast charm in the late mid game. They can jump into communions. Yeah. Do astral stuff too. They're really, really good. They're they're an, an absolutely amazing mage. Oh, they can also do wooden warriors and stuff, and then army of giants, a bunch of things they can do. So that's the Nahuli. Next up, we have the rain priest. Now, we have a bunch of priests here who are capital only. Basically, everybody left on the list. So these are your core mages, the Nahuli and the rain priest, the Nahuli and the, the Miklin priest. Everybody else is cap only. So you have to decide which one you're going to make. So this guy, the Rain Priest, notable for being Water 2, he can cast Quickness on your guys, which can be really important if you're trying to take out Thugs. And just on a bless, like a lot of times with Micklin, you take a very killy bless, and Quickness is really good on a killy bless. So yeah, it just, this is a great support mage. In the late game, Water 2 lets him do Quickening, especially if you have the Water Booster and the Water Lens. They can do Quickening every fight, which is really good. Aussies and stuff, pretty much all your troops are reasonably low encumbrance, and Aussies are very low encumbrance, so you can take advantage of that. Then you get the Moon Priest. This guy's really special for being a high-level Astral Mage or an Apple 2 Mage. I'm going to make it really easy to do turn one anti-magic, basically trivial, and perhaps most importantly, this guy can cast Sin Lesser Horror, so you've got magic phase threats. He can also teleport with one magic booster, which he can forge like a skull shine, a, a Starshine Skullcap, and this guy can teleport in and, you know, surprise people where they weren't expected. And then, of course, can do, like, Power of the Spheres, Light of the Northern Stars and stuff to make all your Nahuli Astral 2. If that's something you desire. The Priest King, this is your best leader. So it's 120 leadership, which is really nice. Otherwise, the paths on this guy aren't super remarkable. You know, it's kind of like the same paths on a Nahuli. You don't have to worry about Magic Duel. So if you want to bring big nature to a fight without worrying about magic duel, you can bring this guy. And also these paths are nice for making like armor of twisting thorns and climbing up really high into nature. So you can do like, you know, thistle mace, armor of twisting thorns, and then moonvine bracelet on this guy, which are all items Micklin can make. And voila, you've got, you know, a nature five mage. So anyway. He's also a slaver, so he can collect slaves for you if you're not using your tribal kings. And then finally, we have, and I believe all these guys are fast to recruit. And so far, everybody has been holy two. The sun priest is our only holy three. And that's really important because with Micklin, you're going to want to do divine blessing on all of your sacreds because you're not going to be having enough sacred. Are you going to be having so many sacreds? You don't want to cast like Holy One, Holy Two Blessing. You want to get everybody at the beginning. So yeah, Fire Two, Blood Three, Holy Three. These guys are going to be pretty sick. As for the fire spells in particular, I can't really think of a ton of things you're going to use this for. Blood Three is nice for casting big blood spells. So this is probably going to be the guy... You're rolling with your army. You're going to have him do Divine Blessing and then like Bloodlust or Rush of Strength or Blood Rain or stuff like that. That's probably more the stuff you're going to be doing with this. I mean, this opens up summoning Arch Devils and things like that. Like the paths are useful, but just in terms of like being in combat, you know, you can do Fire Fend or I don't know. The thing, the types of things you're usually going to do with huge armies of Sacreds, I'm, I'm not seeing a ton of use here. You might be doing like, you know, Firestorm or something if you've got fire resistance. But evocation isn't something Micklin normally runs up super high. So these are the guys. You also get a bonus to fire blesses and blood blesses. So whereas you're going to probably have all of the blesses, this is certainly very valuable, you know, free scales basically. So, or free blesses. So there's one more thing we're going to cover from this screen, and that is the blood sacrifices. So Micklin has a very strange mechanic where your temples do, doesn't spread dominion at all. Therefore, it's also very easy to get Dom killed as Micklin. 
you need to be ready to blood sacrifice. Like, I think there was a game I was in. Somebody had like, they had like a, a losing Dominion event. And then like a Pangea player threw a harpy prophet onto their capital and started preaching. And they got Dom killed on like turn four. So um, these are things you have to worry about. Your temples do not generate any dominion pressure. The way you generate basically all of your dominion pressure is going to come from blood sacrificing. So you take blood slaves that you've gotten, you sacrifice them, that gives you candles. And basically the way that works is that temples will generate temple checks. They'll have a chance to generate a temple check. Blood sacrificing generates temple checks. So whereas if you preach, it's a local only to that province and it can really at most go up by one candle if you're lucky. If you have a holy three guy who's blood sacrificing, he will function like three temples and it will percolate outward. So you can actually have a ton of dominion pressure if you want or very little. Now, the thing we need to talk about, though, is how this kind of works at like in a metagame level, or I don't know, like how it works in game is basically what you can do is you can take a complete Hellbless. Let's see if I actually have any Micklin builds here. Okay, turns out I don't. So the first thing you're going to do with Micklin normally is torture scales because you don't really, this is the, I forget exactly how much order you need to max recruitment but your units don't take resources so you can burn this scale to the ground you you can burn growth as well and it's like yeah this would be nice to have population but it's probably more nice to have a better bless but the real threat with Micklin 2 is being killed early so it's like yeah just go ahead and torch everything if you survive the early game which a like a complete hell bless is going to help you with you'll have a better shot at making it. Now, this one's tricky. Do you torch magic all the way? If you torch magic all the way, it, there's, you're going to have problems researching. You can make infamiliars and stuff to counteract some of this, but you're not going to be able to make alquils. You're not going to be able to make the death things. You're really just going to be able to make lanterns, and you really don't want to be rushing Construction 6, in my opinion, on this nation. And it's a blood nation, so like if you want to use these guys to summon imps or stuff, it's kind of nice having magic scales. This is a path you can think about keeping, not completely dumping. Um, and you're going to want enough uh, dominion points to produce like a lot of sacreds, right? Because early game, the idea is maxing sacred production. So, okay, let's say you do this, and which pretender god should we take? You probably want to take this one, because with a it's really cheap, and it's going to give you a lot of path access, and it gives you bring your fortune. It just is probably the best one. And so now you get to spend all your points. So let's say we do five or six. Let's say we do like six or seven. Let's say we do like seven, six, six. Let's give our guys spirit sight maybe and magic weapons. That, you, you wouldn't really mind MR either. Death, you actually, yeah, death. You want some poison resistance. We might have gone a little high on some of these. I can't remember exactly how much you can dump turmoil. I think this is about it. And you can dump magic all the way down to drain if you really, really, really want to go deep in the paint. And undying is pretty good too. And maybe we just go neutral. Something like this. And then how do you do this? Well, you normally want some resistances and you want attack skill and you want some resistances and swiftness is really good here. It's going to really help an expansion. You could do like Thunderstrike, depend I mean, not Thunderstrike, Major Shock Resistance here as well. The other thing you could do is you could just do two swiftness stacks and then jump this up to seven. That was kind of what I wanted to do. And they get a minor shock resistance. And that's kind of the same thing I wanted to do with water is stack defense twice and have like a little bit extra to get minor cold resistance. We might do this and just tank drain. And that way we can actually pay for this. And strength of the earth. And then magic weapons, I think is a requirement. 
And then it's like, do you get spirit sight? Your Aussies don't benefit from it or minor magic resistance. I think that's up to you. It, we don't have easy access to darkness ourselves. And if the game plan is to beat Micklin by casting darkness, that's not a very good game plan. So I would probably go and get a bit of MR. That's going to help with killing thugs and super combatants. And then you actually, Undying is really good to stack on these guys. It's really effective. So we want as much of that as we can take. And that's the other thing about Spirit Sight. It's going to free up, not taking it, it's going to free up more for, for this. We'll take a bit of Poison Resistance, and then we'll take a, a bit of, of Resilience. You can also take Low Light Vision here too, but hit points, you get... Basically, the reason I'm, I, I like Undying and Resilient is you're going to get it uh, affecting your units twice here. So they're going to get it once in this form and once again in the second form. So they're really double effectiveness. And then on Blood, you can go just pure Strength of Blood, or Strength of the Flesh. Can we afford to get any more of these? Not really. Kind of an awkward amount we're left with here. If we could jump this down. But right now we're at plus six strength, and you can go higher. Like I've seen Aussie builds where you really, really max these things out and you get, you know, like plus 12, I think is the highest I've seen. But Blood Surge is nice here too. Blood Surge is not going to help you against super combatants. But I think with this build, th there's some things you're missing on this compared to Lizavalva. Like, you don't really have Earth access. I mean, you have it on your Pretender, but as a nation, we don't have Earth Mages. So you're not going to be able to easily do, like, Weapons of Sharpness and stuff like Zavalva can do. So it is more important on Miklin to, like, really stack strength if you're worried about super combatants. So there's kind of, there's an argument for just skipping the Blood Surge, really. But Blood Surge's first armies is just really, really effective. So anyway, that's a thing. And then, what, eight? Yeah, I don't really know the exact way to build the rest of this. Let's see. I think, I mean, I'd kind of like to have three more and have strength and blood surge. We just don't really have the points. I mean, you could sack this and sack this. And may, I mean, maybe this is the way to do it. I mean, these guys are going to be ridiculously killy at this point. The other thing, you know, we could just... Get, I think you probably want more Jags. So, like, let's say we go back to here. And then we go down to, like, six or something. Oh, we're still... We still have this problem. We have a few extra design points. I mean, we could go down to five and then maybe pick up, like, not completely dumpster drain. Man, it's really hard for me to not... Okay. Anyway. Okay, we're going to dumpster drain all the way. And take, we can take a third stack of this, too. So yeah, th there's really no way with a bless like this. You can kind of defense tank these guys because their attack skill isn't amazing. And that way, it's probably a little bit better. I don't know. There, there's not like a an obvious answer, but... This is the type of build that I think you probably want to run, is having no scales. Now, this does beg the question, must you? Must you have no scales? Or is there stuff you could do with scales? And the answer is, it's actually really hard to expand, I think. I would be really interested to see, like, a, a low bless Micklin, because I'm not even really sure what you would do. You could maybe get, like, a really budget thing and have pretty nice scales on, like, an Imprisoned Bless. You have really good mages. Micklin has really good mages. But they just, everything that they have is sacred. And they have really good sacred stuff. I don't, there's no reason not to lean fully into, I mean, there are reasons to not go completely, like, maybe you want magic. You don't need a Bless this heavy. But maybe you do want to just take a bless this heavy. You can, right? Just remember to make infamiliars when you're researching. And yeah, your research is going to suck. But that's, you're not playing the research nation. You're playing Micklin. So yeah, this is really bothering me. I hate having 32 design points left over. It's like a curse.
Uh, anyway, so you can do something like this, um, and that's basically how you build them. Um, we're going to come back and look at some of the, like, the priests and stuff. And, uh, like, uh, some of the summons. So we get kind of interesting things. You can get a Nankui like you like Zabalba has. Zabalba can kind of recruit these guys. But, yeah, you can get them at Blood 7. You get bat, uh, Beast Bat Free Spawn, which is kind of cool. You can get these guys who are pretty interesting. They're reanimator priests. So you can go like mini Scalaria here. 36 blood slaves get you one of these guys and you get the holy two reanimation, which is kind of nice. You know, it's not bad. Yeah, they're also death access, which is kind of sick. You need death access on your pretender, but once you have one of these guys, you just slap a skull staff and another blood booster on them and they can make more of themselves. This would be something that you probably wouldn't make if you have like a true hell bless, but it's something you could like dabble your feet into more as like a, a more tool belt kind of Micklin build where you're not going all in on a hell bless. Basically, the idea is the more you put in the hell bless, the less good alternatives look. And this doesn't really take advantage of a bless. This is a way to spin slaves where you're not getting sacred troops. Whereas in Aqua, you get beast bats, which are sacred. Then uh, you get a Kutel, which is like a high-powered nature mage. You get these Talogs. I, they're kind of nice if you need the path diversity. You read through them and see if you need them. Generally, you probably aren't going to be getting a ton of them. These guys are kind of cool. They're assassins that are nature, blood, death mages. They're pretty good if you need, you know, assassins. But again, if you're getting these guys, you're not getting Aussies. And... I generate so it depends. If you have a tool belt Micklin, you can start playing and using all these little tools. Like you get the Savitos, you get the Tapuluchis. You probably still get Ozolotos, even if you have a very light bless, because they're really good, but you don't have to go all in. Like the alternatives to Aussies look much more attractive. You get these guys, it, it is worth thinking about. You know, you could potentially try to do like an Alt 5 rush and put up Mother Oak and then spam out Jaguars. Because these guys with the Strong Bless, like if you, especially if you take an Awake or Dormant Bless, putting out a ton of these guys is actually a, a significant amount of combat power. You get a bunch of Sacred Jags. It's really Mage Turn efficient. It's pretty good. Aussies we've talked about. They're ridiculous. Monster Toads, they are also sacred. They have, I believe, Poison Cloud. So they're going to poison things around them. Generally, so if you have a like poison resistance in your bless, you can mix these in with your army too. The problem is if if you can't if you can point buff them, it's okay. If you can't point buff them, they tend to just die, right? Because they get they have trample, so they get isolated and they don't have enough protection or anything to survive. Uh, Jaguar toad, these spit. They're also sacred though, so you can have them, you know, do five poison spits and then run in as support. They use nature gems and they're pretty efficient. I don't. I wouldn't judge you if you summoned them. Um, the Timitzels are really interesting, actually. So these guys have armor-negating bolts. They're sacred as well, but usually the reason you get them is for the Stellar Bolt. Uh, it's a pretty good way, especially if you don't stack strength up super high, um, to deal with super combatants. The Pincher here is also... Oh, I thought it was armor-piercing. It's not. But yeah, you really just like 10 of these guys, they will... They have pretty high precision, but usually once you're the, if you wait for the guy to get a surrounded, they'll usually waddle up and get in range where they'll hit without causing friendly fire too much. And if you're getting hit by 10 of these guys, it's a bad day for you if you're a super combatant or a thug. So yeah, these are a way to make sure you're not getting super combatanted. Otherwise, usually your gems are going to be better spent on Aussies. These are 10 guys and a whole mage turn to get a Timitzel. Whereas Ozlatos, for these guys, you have two ways of getting them. One is at Blood 4, which is often going to be the first research target of a Mikla. And not always, but it's a pretty good one. And uh, yeah, you're going to be making three Aussies a turn, or per mage turn with that. The other way is at Blood 8, and it's more gem efficient. So these are, it's 16 gems to get three. So that's about, that's a little over five gems per. This is 40 to get... Um, 14, which I will avail myself of a calculator here. So that's about 2, 2.8. So they're a lot cheaper with Reina Jaguars. Um, 
So there's multiple ways to get Aussies, but once you get Reign of Jaguars, you're really rolling in in some cat money. And then Jade Serpents, they're kind of interesting. They have a lot of hit points and they're standard bearers. So they are 10 movements. So they're a little bit slower than Jaguar Warriors. So if you mix them in, they tend to lag behind, which is a good thing. They won't get killed. If you're worried about Jaguar morale. So these are all the units, but I, it's really not that complicated, guys. It's usually go hell bless get a ton so eagle warrior expansion is kind of interesting well we'll talk about that maybe i'll make a game real quick and we'll practice expansion so let's do like this and I'll put an easy ai on so he doesn't get in my way and then we'll take micklin and let's load up this guy okay and so we're imprisoned. We're going to make a profit here. We're going to get a bunch of Eagle Warriors. And we're going to make... These Nahuli are sacred. So you can get a little bit better expansion if you're not making them and you don't need to. So we'll do that. We'll have this guy patrol and not get in the way. So Eagle Warrior expansion is usually a little bit faster. The things that we're going to want to do here archers so these archers are going to be pretty easy for us to hit we're going to leave some of these guys behind because i want to actually have we actually don't need all of them i'm going to put these guys on a line and i'm going to put them on fire and keep distance closest fire closest and keep distance and we're going to have these guys back here on cast this spell divine blessing we're going to put these guys on hold and attack archers these guys back here and i think this is how it works so i was telling me how to do it i haven't really practiced so we're gonna we're gonna dry run in here but we're gonna go ahead and make a priest here because we're gonna expand again next turn using what's left of our other guys and let's see if this works this is very dangerous recording videos when you haven't done expansion testing so they should route Oh, look, it works. Okay. So very clean expansion. We're going to do this again. Deer tribe. I think the... I actually don't know where they're going to land on this one. This one will probably be a clusterfuck, but I'm just showing you a kind of an idea. Oh, yeah, the Micklin Priests get randoms. I didn't mention that. So they can get all these randoms, and these are all important. Like the fire ones can make Aussies for you. The nature ones... There's some, like, blood nature spells. I can't remember what they were. We were just looking at them. Could have sworn there were a couple. There's also jade daggers you can make, they, the, which lets you blood sacrifice better. Here you can see we're actually reasonably close to getting Dom killed. We, if we had a bad event in our capital, we could get Dom killed. That would actually be really... I'm going to let it happen if it does, because it would just be too funny. So we're going to come over here. These guys are going to be up front. We're going to have them on hold and fire closest. Oh, wait, wait, fire and keep distance closest. And we're going to have these guys in the back. Hold and attack archer. There's no archers here, so we're going to do hold and attack rear. We're going to have this guy here. He's going to do blessing, blessing, blessing spells. We'll put him back here amongst these guys. And we'll see how that works. Let's see how this goes. We haven't really tested it. I haven't done this before. This particular style. So they're routing now. Did we lose any? We lost one. We will just call that acceptable attrition. We didn't get the commander here, but we caused a route. I'm not even sure how that happened. But this little party's out of steam now. So it needs to come home. These are map move 14. These are map move 10. This guy's map move 10. Okay. 
we're only at two dominion here. We're going to have this guy needs to blood sacrifice. This squad can keep going. We'll have these guys archers. These Atavi actually might cause us problems. We, we die really quickly to the ranged attacks. We, we actually can send out a, a better party next turn, which I think I'd like to do. We'll send out our, we'll probably need one of these priest kings anyway. Um, by the way, you should also check out Mountain Arena. Demonsthenes is playing Micklin in that, and he has, he goes all in on a Jaguar Bless, has an Await God for research, has Bark Skin, like a, a really cool other build. This is, I'm showing you more like the meta way to play it. Not to say it's the right way, but it's just the way that most people do play it. And you can also make like some arrow catchers here, which we probably should avail ourselves of. Who are the best arrow catchers? Reinforced shield, reinforced, oh wait, hide shield. Hide shield, are these all hide shields? Okay. We'll just go off protection then. Okay. Actually, maybe these guys are better. So we can make a lot more. Yeah. Yoink. So this is a way to think about doing expansion. Heavy Cav will definitely lose that. These guys are kind of petered out as well. So I think what we'll do... I wish I could... We finally got a tiny bit of Dominion spread. I think what we want to do I think I actually want to take some of the I, th I have this all messed up. I'll just we'll, we'll, this will be the last turn we're going to do for for expansion here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take some of these guys on this dude and we're going to come down here. So most of the slaves here and then this guy is going to come up here and he'll start site searching. But he's going to be on hold and attack. We're going to do a hold and attack rear for both these. Fire and keep closest. Divine blessing. This guy's going to be back here. There's not going to be much for him to cast. But he'll hand off these guys. And then these guys are going to be on fire and keep distance. And then these guys are going to be on hold and attack archer or rear. And we'll have this guy do blessing. I'll have these guys on fire and keep distance. And put these guys in the back. And I'd like, I, I need to switch the ratio of these. We're going to put two of these guys down here. So I have a few more of my sacreds coming. And that, that's all I'm going to show you for expansion, however this turns out. Let me just see how this goes. But this is kind of the basic way to do eagle expansion. Now... What I want to talk about next is fort construction. And fort construction is pretty important. My operating assumption is that if you're in a competitive game, like you're in a game with a lot of good players, you are going to get coalitioned as Micklin. Because Micklin kind of deserves to just be killed. And in early age, expansion is a lot easier because things don't really have a ton of armor. You're not dealing with crossbows. It's not super hard in the other ages. It's just kind of easy in the early age. So because of that, you are going to... You're going to have a better start. You're going to be more set up to deal with the coalition. Now you can see we are literally poor as shit. So we're not going to have a ton of infrastructure. Now what you're going to often want to do is Micklin, is you're going to be like, oh, I expanded really well. I'm going to go put like a fort here because this is a high-income province. Let me show you something, okay? This is, I have burnt all my skills. I didn't go, you can go turmoil three, right? You don't need that many recruitment points. Well, the thing is you don't really measure this by your capital, you measure it by another fort. But you can see we don't really need, and we could also go to Huli here if we want to really max. Oh no, we're doing more, more raiding parties, but, oh, well, this guy could lead a raiding party, but actually these guys would probably want to take somewhere else. Okay, so what I want to show you is look how many resources we have left over, right? 
look how many we start with. These guys use hardly any resources, okay? So you don't have to worry about resources. These guys, maxing out recruitment of them, hardly use any resources. Okay, resources is not a thing. That's why I didn't even waste a brain cell dumping sloth. It just did it immediately without thinking about it. Now, does that mean it's always... Maybe you can come up with a production Micklin build. I wish you luck. So what this means is we can fort our cap circle, right? Normally you don't want to fort your cap circle because, well, lots of reasons, right? Like you want to project power far away from you. You don't want to like just project power close. Um, if you fort your cap circle, you're going to deny resources from your cap and you're also not going to pull resources from as wide of an area as you can to make the most number of troops you can for your first war. So you like wouldn't do it. I advise with Micklin to mostly fort your cap circle. Because especially in a competitive lobby, you should you may not get coalitioned. Like people may want to be friendly with you. They may have other war targets in mind. But I would always it would be my default plan that which by the way, this is not my I every nation I play with, I like to think about how I would fight off like a two v one or something, or maybe a three v one. Like that's something I think about when I'm coming up with like my pretender design and all that stuff. But I don't plan on it exactly. Like, my plan isn't to get coalitioned. If you're playing Micklin, I think your plan should be you get at least 2v1'd. Right? And it's going to be the two neighbors you probably want to fight the least. And maybe it's more than that. And I think you can. You have a pretty good shot at fighting it off. You might have to outplay him a little bit. But you, you definitely, if you have a really good bless, you can do it. So, let's say you build a pretender, I mean, a, a commander here. You fort this. What does that mean? It means we're going to be getting sacreds out of, like, they're all going to be coming from the same region. It's going to be really easy to consolidate armies. What it also means is there's not going to be isolated forts, which are easy to pick off if we get coalitioned. And if we lose peripheral land, it'll be easy to take back. We don't have to worry about storming forts or things like that. So we fort up our cap circle. We slam sacreds. And for them to come and take a fort from us, they're going to have to come into our cap circle from which it will be very easy for us to mobilize and, like, go pound them in the face with our, like, super good troops. And they we have, like, friendly map move, too, for basically all of our sacred units, okay? So these guys can be moving around really, really, really easily. I wonder if any of our commanders aren't. No, they all are. I think our, our prophet wasn't, if I recall. This guy's only map move 10. So your prophet isn't, but, you know, this guy, the high priest is. Point being, fort your cap circle. Don't think twice about it. If you get coalitioned, you're going to be very happy that all of your unit producing stuff is close by. And that should be a goal to get a few of these online really quickly and make a ton of units. Yeah. The other kind of cool thing about Micklin Forts is you only make a palisade. And I think they're more expensive and take a little bit longer, but you get an extra commander point from them. So you don't have to do like the normal Ford upgrade. Um, but yeah, that's Miklin. Um, for for expansion and stuff. I hopefully from here you can figure out how to do the rest. You can do the same with um with Jaguar expansion. In this case, you're just gonna blender your way through the actual troop line instead of sniping commanders. Um, the other things to note about that are like heavy cab and stuff, you have to be pretty careful eating a lance charge with jags, they really don't like that. So you'll want to use very friendly arrow, like lance catching bait for that. So yeah, we'll, I'll just hit intern one more time. We'll look at it. And then the last thing we're going to talk about here is controlling your dominion. And there's a few things that need to be said on that topic. I actually have no idea how this is going to go. Okay, we did manage to route them. Yeah, usually the heavy cab are going to be easier with eagles than with jags. This would be a really hard province to take with Jaguars. But if things go sideways, you can be in a pretty bad way with, with the Eagles. Like if they land on top of the, the heavy cab, they get blown up. But look at their stats real quick once they get blessed too. So this guy, he's got battle fright, but otherwise unaffected. Yeah, 14 attack, 17 defense. So pretty hard to kill in melee and then very damaging. You can see we've got our strength is buffed plus six. Once we go Blood Surge, though... Oh, did we do Blood Surge on this build? I can't remember. We did. So once they get Blood Surge, you can see they become true murder machines. 
And the lance means they get a chance to repel certain types of attacks as well. But they're pretty good. Dominion. The thing we need to talk about here is, should you always blood sacrifice on autopilot or not? I would say the answer is no. So this guy's probably done enough. We can have him sit here and research. You really don't benefit by having your dominion in your lands. You're going to get less income once it spreads. So you just want to keep yourself from dom killing yourself in the early game. There's a thing you can do where if your neighbor... So let's say the, the, my neighbor's over here, and let's say they have, they're running a scales build or something, right? So they spread their dominion in here. I want their dominion all in my land because at a minimum, I'm not going to take advantage from all of their scales, but I won't take the malice from mine. So that will be kind of nice. We'll have like a morale penalty, but we can deal with that. The thing is, is that there's actually a way to benefit from the full amount of their scales. Like normally, like if, if you imagine these were all positive scales and of enemy dominion, we wouldn't get the benefit from them. It would just take us to neutral and be like, we don't have the malice from ours. But there's an exception to that. And that is once we get rid of all of their candles, but we don't have any of ours, you could have yours in too. But once your candles are in, you're going to start and making those scales turn negative, right? So if you can keep the candles right at zero or just barely you know, hovering back and forth between yours and theirs, you'll usually have actually good scales you take full advantage of. Um, the thing is, is you can't preach. You see, there's no preach option. So you can't really go around and like micromanage this in all of your provinces. What you can do is you can blood hunt. I mean, uh, blood sacrifice, but you can only do this in a place with a fort and it's not guaranteed to affect just that fort. So you're doing, it's kind of like you're trying to do like a realistic painting or something, but your brush is like a foot wide. Like, it's a low-resolution way to control Dominion. Um, so it's something you can maybe kind of control on border forts and, like, to a degree kind of have some influence of. Like, maybe you go through waves of letting their Dominion creep in, and then you turn on the blood sacrifice and kind of push it back out. And through that period, you'll have, like, decent scales. There's ways to kind of think about it, but you're not going to be able to easily micromanage every province to have it with enemy scales without any dominion. And then, so anyway, that's the way to kind of abuse the dominion mechanic for, Demi for, for Micklin. The, the other thing that bears mention here is as the game goes into late game, you need to just suck it up and push your dominion everywhere. Because once Cancer's Globals come out, if somebody casts like Wrath of God or Murdering Winter, not Murdering Winter, Vengeful Waters, like some of the really cancerous dominion-based globals, while they've got their dominion all in your land, because you're just like, -hoo -hoo -hoo, I'm so happy to have good scales in my land. The game's probably just over for you, right? So, you know, you need to judge when that time is and get ready to start blood sacrificing. That being said, if you have a lot of forts and you have like a holy three there and you give them a jade dagger, they can make a tremendous amount of dominion pressure very quickly. So it's a game you can catch up in pretty quickly. I don't think there's too much else to say. Fort your cap circle, have a good bless. Check out Demosthenes' build in the Mountain Arena. He had an awake researcher with like bark skin and some other stuff. I think it was really good. What I've shown you here is just kind of the meta imprisoned hell, hell bless. And there's probably a lot of ways to, to play them. You have really good mages, but... If you're doing a ton of blood hunting and stuff, you're not going to have, and especially if you sack drain, you're not going to have great research. Uh, these guys are plugging away at four research a piece. So yeah, they're not, they're not exactly figuring out things very quickly. So yeah, anyway, I hope you guys have, have enjoyed this. I think there's a really strong nation. Special thanks to, to JGN who commissioned this video. And yeah, I, I hope you guys play a Micklin game. They're, they're fun to play in single player too. Because, you know, Hellblast Sacreds, you can kind of roll like players, and that's kind of a fun thing to do. The blesses that are going to be better for single player are probably going to be more defensive oriented, like Blood Bond Region, Fortitude sort of things, um, which you can do with Micklin. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the blesses that are better for multiplayer are probably more the stat blesses uh, with a bit of resistance mixed in than magic weapons and stuff. Um, but anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed. 
and uh, look forward to seeing you in a game. And uh, until next time, take care.